Welcome everyone to today's webinar on managing your 401k presented by Shimon Canal Trust Company. Many thanks to our presenter, Christopher Kelly, for being with us today and for and all the participants who have joined in. Please note this webinar is being recorded to share what we learn with the business community. Christopher will share his presentation with you then followed ample time for questions and discussion. Please use the chat to submit any questions during the presentation. And just a reminder, when others are speaking, please keep your audio on mute to minimize background noise. With that said, I'll turn it over to Christopher to start things off. All right, thanks, Candice. Um, again, thanks everybody for joining us this morning. And certainly thanks again to the Chamber for inviting us to speak on, on this particular topic, um, trying to manage your 401k in these uncertain times during COVID-19, the pandemic, whatever you might like to call this um, certainly interesting situation that we've been in since the beginning of the year. And I will preface this quickly by saying that even though we've titled it Managing Your 401k, it certainly applies to any type of retirement plan that you might have in place. So you may be at an organization where you have a 403b plan or a 457 plan, your 401k, or it could even be your IRA. Everything we're going to chat about today really applies to any type of retirement savings account that you have on your own or through your employer. Okay. So let's jump in here and um, I'm assuming that everybody can see the screen just fine. Um, you know, so our agenda, I'm gonna chat a little bit about who we are in terms of our retirement practice here at Shimon Canal. We're gonna talk about some of the key points during the pandemic in the first part of this year that kind of really created the volatile markets and so forth and a lot of unease for a lot of investors saving for retirement. We'll kind of look at the S&P 500 as kind of a tracking mechanism to talk about what the investment market did early in the pandemic and through now, and then talk about some tips to navigate these volatile times that we are in. And, you know, it's a little bit of a Monday morning quarterback for some of this, but it applies to thinking about future issues as well when the market is, is volatile and will probably remain that way for the rest of this year. And then we do want to stress trying to keep saving towards retirement, certainly if you can and have that ability um, and then the last thing we'll kind of chat about are some possible help and relief that we can get from the CARES Act that was introduced earlier in this year, specifically relating to things that you might be able to take advantage of from your retirement accounts. So, you know, really briefly, um, here at Shimon Canal Trust Company, we do have a great wealth management practice. And the team that I lead is the Retirement Services Group. And our focus is really helping local businesses and organizations within the Shimon Canal footprint to develop or administer employee benefit plans, specifically um, retirement programs. So we focus on designing plans, implementing them. We do all the record keeping. We do all the tracking in terms of balances. We keep it compliant with the government. We act as the investment advisor, the trustee, the fiduciary. But um, I don't want to say most importantly, but one key point is that we do help our, our clients deliver the plan to all the participants in the program. So we do have a, a large number of people we work with here in Shimon County, but we also expand out into the Corning area, over to Binghamton, into the Finger Lakes, and then we do jump up into Albany. So, you know, one of the key things for us is that we are able to provide this as a local service and have a local team to help people in terms of saving towards retirement. So, you know, the topic that we're chatting about today certainly is something that we've been working with our clients on uh, since the beginning of the year and answering a lot of phone calls from participants trying to help navigate how they should be saving for retirement in these challenging times. So what I thought we would do is, is talk about some key points um, early in the pandemic. So, you know, late 2019, in China, they started to identify a new ammonia of an unknown cause. And that started to you know, make the news a little bit. And then in early January, there was a continued outbreak. And as, as everybody probably is well aware of, they were able to somewhat determine that this really came out of the Wuhan province, the Wuhan province in China. Late January, the WHO, the World Health Organization, declared this to be a global health emergency and then shortly thereafter, the Trump administration enacted a restriction from travel into the US from China 
to try to help control the spread of this disease and try to prevent it from coming into the United States as best as possible. Middle of February, the disease was officially named the COVID-19 um, that we are all very familiar with at this point in time. And then in February is when we start to, started to see a really downturn in the market. And we're gonna go into this in a little bit more detail. But really, we hadn't seen this type of a drop in the markets over the past two years, where we had some significant days where we saw the Dow drop more than 1,000 points. And that's really when we started to get some panic in, in people and trying to figure out what they should be doing with their retirement savings account and really trying to understand if this was kind of a short-term thing or as this disease was progressing, was this going to be a long-term effect on the market that people really needed to be thinking about what should I be doing with my retirement assets and how long is this truly going to be in effect? Late in, in February, you know, cases were discovered in the US obviously, and we had our first death reported back in late February. And then close to the middle of March, President Trump, Trump declared this to be a national emergency. And the CDC started to have conversations about trying to restrict gatherings. So no more than 50 people should be gathering as a group inside the United States. March 20th closed out one of the worst weeks since 2008 in terms of the investment market with significant drops. And what we began to see is that Illinois and, and New York here began to join California in ordering residents to begin to stay home and not travel outside unless they had specific reasons, you know, basically to go to the grocery store to get supplies and so forth. Um, certainly, I remember, you know, we were sitting at home on a Friday night uh, right around this time period when uh, we live up in Ithaca and I have kids in the school district up there and our phones began buzzing telling us, hey, you know, we're effective immediately switching over from, you know, to a remote environment for the school children. And, you know, this was about eight o'clock at night on that Friday and my wife and I looked at each other, went into a little bit of, you know, deer in the headlights look of, oh my gosh, what should we do? And we jumped in the car and ran down to Wegmans to try to stock up on some things. And certainly we were not alone in that thinking. Um, lots of people were there. The stores were all wiped out in terms of supplies and food and so forth. And that really began, um, you know, the pandemic and, and, you know, for our individual experience. Later in March, what we did begin to see is that the government began to take some action to address the financial impact of this. We saw the Fed uh, you know, continue to de decrease interest rates. And then we did see the, um, you know, the financial relief package signed into law, got approved by Congress and Trump signed it on March 27th, really creating the CARES Act, the, the payroll protection program and so forth to really provide relief to organizations, to businesses and individual Americans, you know, including things that would create the stimulus payments that came out. And then we're gonna talk about some things that affect retirement plans to make relief a little bit easier so people could access their 401k plans if they needed to, um, to get them through these situations. Um, certainly at the end of March, more and more states were issuing state home directives so they could try to control the pandemic and so forth. But really what we saw was, you know, throughout that, that period in, in, in March, in just that few weeks time period, the pandemic had an immediate, really significant impact and put millions of Americans out of work. Um, and and we were, what was staggering is that we saw unemployment benefits, you know, millions of people applying for benefits because what happened during this situation, which we're all aware of, you know, businesses began to close, people were staying home, people were either you know, laid off from work, they were furloughed, they lost their jobs, and all of a sudden, all these Americans were unable to really have gainful employment to create this, um, this dire economic situation. Um, so we did see, you know, fairly quick reaction by the government to try to provide this relief. But those are some of the, the points I wanted to hit on that really began this pandemic and the early parts of the financial changes in the markets and the significant drops. So what I thought we would take a look at is the S&P 500 and how it tracked over a couple of different periods here. So in 2019, you know, was really a great year in the market where we saw the S&P 500 close the year up about 28%. And we're chatting about the S&P 500 index because 
this is kind of a widely viewed good measure of the overall markets um, from the investment standpoint in the US. It kind of looks at 500 of the largest companies and kind of blends their performance together to kind of give us an index of a rate of return of that market. So what we saw then is that the market continued to rise in the first month and a half in 2020. But beginning in February 19th through March 23rd, the S&P 500 lost value of about 34%, which was a, which obviously is a very significant decline. And throughout this month, you know, we took a lot of phone calls, we had a lot of conversations, and there was a lot of panic about what we should be doing with our retirement accounts. And unfortunately, this happened so swiftly and so quickly that by the time the market dropped this much, even you know, over the first couple of weeks at the end of February there, people didn't have a lot of warning and a lot of opportunity to take action if they wanted to, to try to reposition their retirement accounts. So many people rode this wave all the way down. And as I mentioned earlier, right at the end of March is when the stimulus packages were, you know, were approved and introduced. And what we began to see was a significant increase and a significant recovery from this drop in the market. And if we look from March 23rd all the way through early October of, of 2020, the S&P has increased by just about 50% to try to recover that significant drop that happened um, primarily in the month of March. So what's interesting about this is that I don't know that anybody really expected or predicted this level of recovery um, this quickly. So you may hear about like a V-shaped recovery where the market goes down significantly and then rebounds very significantly. So again, this was something unexpected, um, but certainly it was, it was well received by, by people saving for retirement to see their accounts you know, recover fairly quickly. And you know, a lot of this, what we saw and this rebound was really led by a lot of technology sector funds where you know, different companies that were able to do well during the pandemic. So companies like Microsoft and, and Netflix and Amazon and Google and things of that nature, you know, Zoom for example, benefited tremendously as people were looking for ways to have their groceries delivered or what they could do in their stay at home environment. So, you know, watching movies on Netflix and things like that, those were where, you know, a lot of these companies were, were doing very well and continue to do well during a pandemic time period. But if you go back and look at what the S&P has done from, from the beginning of January up until early October, you know, at this point in time, it's really only up about 3%. So it's been a, a really wild roller coaster ride. So you can kind of see the significant dip, um, dip during the month of March and then the rebound it's had since then. So, you know, as the virus began to, you know, I never want to say the word get under control because I don't think it ever got to that point. Um, and I don't know where it's going to go from here as we enter the winter months and so forth. But what we did see is this roller coaster ride. But year to date, you know, hopefully people that didn't do anything with their 401k accounts find themselves close back to the position that they were in at the beginning of the year. Um, so let's shift a little bit and, and talk about some different tips that we have and things that we see when we talk to our clients about what we should be doing there during these challenging times. The first thing for a retirement plan is always looking at the big picture. You know, for most people, saving for retirement is a long-term savings goal. So we try to focus not on the moment in time of what's happening in the short period, but we try to think about the long-term picture and that we're gonna go through many different market cycles in our career and our savings um, you know, over, over our lifetime for savings for retirement. And what's happened this year is certainly one blip along the way that, you know, will have an impact on, on that long-term number, but we don't want to focus too much on it. What we do want to mention is that, you know, we don't want to be in a situation where, where we're selling out and being rash, and we're going to talk about that in a second as well, where if we miss out on some of the best days in the market, that can have significant impact on our end game retirement goal when we get to that retirement age. Now, obviously, we're talking about the long term here, and it's a very different story for people that are close to retirement or that are in retirement. And hopefully for folks in that situation, 
you know, ideally before the pandemic, maybe they've taken action to kind of reallocate and, and change their investment strategy to focus on what's appropriate for their moment in time as they're approaching retirement. So maybe they're not as exposed to the stock market as they otherwise would have been earlier in their career. When you take a look at this chart, and hopefully you can see it okay, this really emphasizes you know, missing out on good days in, in the market. So in this scenario, you had $10,000 know, invested in the S&P 500 index back in 1980. And if you carried that forward to the end of August of 2020, that 10,000 could have grown to be almost a million dollars, about $952,000. But if you missed out on five of the best days in the market over that long time period, that could have decreased your potential balance by about 38%. And if you missed out on the 50 best days, you know, significantly you would have lost out on a lot of earnings over that time period. So what we're trying to say is, let's not focus on that one moment in time and let's not try to chase the market or time the market. Because if you go into a time period where you sell out because you think the market is declining, if you don't get back in at the right time and if you miss out on those key recovery days in the market, that significant earnings that you could be missing out on in a long period of time. To put this into recent perspective this year in 2020, you know, I mentioned that the S&P was up about 50% from March up until about right now, but it was up about 31% just from March 23rd through April 29th of this year. So as the market was on its decline, if you took the action to sell out and go into something safe and, and kind of did that at the bottom of the market, if you weren't able to get back in, you may have missed out on that significant rebound just over that one month time period. So that's what we're trying to help folks avoid is that situation where you lock in that loss and you're not able to participate in that recovery when the market does rebound. You know, another thing kind of keying on that is we definitely want to help people avoid rash decisions. You know, when, when the market becomes volatile, it can become very stressful. And when stress starts cause, causing decision making, that's when it can wreak havoc with your, with your retirement account. You know, it, we really want to invest, you know, consistently in good times and bad times in the market. And we want to help our clients avoid that situation where, you know, it, you may have a decline in your balance, but we want to talk with you and, and try to avoid selling out at the bottom. You know, the, the market can be a very much an emotional roller coaster, which is what this graphic is meant to represent where if you think about going back over the past few years, we saw the market increase significantly. And before the pandemic, there was even a discussion about how long can this growth in the market continue, this bull market that we've been in for years and years and years. And when it reaches that top point, people become a little anxious about things and they start to think about what should I be doing differently? And again, I don't think anybody really predicted that the downturn that we saw happen at the beginning of this year was going to be caused by a virus. That was probably the last thing people were expecting to happen. But we rode that market down, you know, in that month of, of late February and into March and got to that bottom point. And, you know, before that and before there was discussions about the relief packages and stimulus bills and, and the Fed reducing interest rates even further, you know, people got to that point thinking about how far is this going to go down and how long will it take to recover? And this is kind of that decision point where this is where people get very stressed and they make these decisions rashly of selling out when the market does bottom out. And again, you never really know when, when, the, bottom of the, market, when the bottom of the market is going to hit. So that's where that, that Monday morning quarterback, that hindsight is 2020, always gives us that clear picture but in that moment, we never know when that point is going to occur. So again, that's where we want to stress that the market is going to go down for a variety of reasons over time, but history does tell us that that market will rebound. So again, trying to avoid erratic decisions in volatile times will help your balance ultimately for retirement. You know, so one of the things that happens is during these volatile markets is that it truly is a good test of what your risk tolerance is. 
So if you think about when you're trying to come up with a strategy for your investments for retirement, you may go through like a risk tolerance quiz, or you may talk to someone like an advisor and get recommendations on how you should be investing for retirement. And they may talk to you about, you know, are you kind of a gambler or are you someone that likes to put your money under a mattress instead or someplace in between in terms of what your risk tolerance is in terms of how much should you be investing versus in stocks versus bonds and so forth. So, you know, here's kind of an example where I've got Sarah and Molly and, and both of them had $50,000 in their 401k plans at the end of 2019. Sarah is a little bit more of an aggressive investor and, and focuses solely on stock-based investments and had all of her money in the S&P 500 index. Molly is a little bit more conservative and was following a balanced approach where she had about 60% of her money in stock-based funds and about 40% in bond-based funds. And those bond-based funds are meant to give her some stability and protection for a portion of her account. And this chart, what I'm trying to show is that, you know, at the beginning of the year, they both had $50,000 in their accounts. The market peaked in, in terms of, of its high point right around February 19th. And, you know, Sarah was up about 5% from the beginning of the year at that point, and Molly was up about 4%. As we went into the pandemic and the market reacted, we hit a bottom point right around March 23rd. And over that month, we saw Sarah lose about 34% of the value of her investment, while Molly was down about 23%. And again, the difference there is that, you know, 40% of Molly's investments were focused on bond funds. And bonds did to go down a little bit, but not nearly as much as what the stock investments had done. By the time we get to about September 30th of this year, from the March 23rd number, Sarah's account rebounded about 50% in value, and Molly's account rebounded by about 31% in value. And again, that difference is driven by the fact that Sarah had a much heavier position in stock-based funds and really rode that wave all the way up. Okay. So again, you know, the takeaway here is that when you think about your risk tolerance, if this was your particular account and you may have experienced this significant swing where in Sarah's situation, she's down 34% and then she went back up 50%. So it's a great time to think about, are you investing appropriately? And are you up for kind of a wild ride like Sarah went through? Or, you know, Molly's ride was still pretty wild as well, but this was kind of an extreme example. But she had a little bit smaller hills to go up and down with. So this becomes a little bit different situation when we don't have such a wide swing in the market. But again, it's a good time to kind of reassess what your investment strategy looks like and how you felt during this particular time period. You know, if you were up at night because you couldn't sleep or had heartburn worrying about your, your, your investment account, you know, maybe then you're invested a little bit too aggressively for your actual risk tolerance. So it's a great time to try to reevaluate. Um, you know, the other takeaway here is that when you look at their balance today versus where they were at the beginning of the year, you know, they basically have, have recovered and they're up a little bit, about three or 4% from where they were at the beginning of the year. So again, it goes to show this kind of quick V-shaped recovery and we're very fortunate that these retirement accounts were able to get back to where they were in a situation where no action was taken to make any changes over this time period. You know, the last couple of points, you know, we do continue to want to emphasize you know, when we go into a pandemic or the markets are down significantly, we certainly want to encourage people to try to continue saving towards retirement. When the market goes down, it's almost like that new money that comes out of your paycheck is able to buy things when they're on sale. And I just threw up two quick examples here just to kind of show you the price points and the differences. So the Vanguard S&P 500 index fund shown here had a unit price of about $313. So to buy one unit of that investment, that was the actual cost. When the market bottomed out, the price of that unit went down to $206. So it dropped about 34%. So if you're continuing to save for retirement and invest along the way, you had an opportunity to buy things that were on sale at about 34% off their high point. 
So the money that you're investing is able to buy more units of these investments in a situation like this. The T. Rowe Price Growth Stock Fund is just another example of that difference in price point where it was down about 32%. So if you have that ability to keep saving during these challenging times, your money is gonna be working more for you. So it's, buy, it's like out there buying things during a holiday season when everything is on sale and your money works and goes a little bit further. Now, we certainly realize that in a pandemic like this, a lot of people lost their jobs, they were furloughed, you know, they weren't getting that steady paycheck and that means they weren't able to continue saving towards retirement perhaps during this time period. And we certainly understand and sympathize with that. But for others that were able to continue to their employment and continue to get that paycheck, this represents kind of an illustration of a time period where, you know, if you're able to do so, kind of keep saving in these pandemic and, and volatile times in the market, because that helps you accumulate more units of ownership over time. And these units will be what you sell off in your retirement years to generate your income. So the more units that you can own of these investments, the better off you're gonna be as you go into your retirement years. You know, this is something that we chat about with clients as well. You know, during, you know, during a pandemic, during a downturn in the market, it's always nice to have an emergency fund, not necessarily part of your retirement account, you know, but something where you're building up in your, in your bank savings account or something of that nature. So that when we approach these times, it's nice to have kind of a safety net to rely on, especially if you were to lose a job or if you're married or have a partner where that spouse or partner loses their job, you've got a little bit of money put aside. So again, it's easy to talk about this now, but in the moment, it's thinking back and saying, boy, maybe I wish I would have had this. So it's kind of a going forward recommendation to think about, all right, you know, I'm saving for retirement. I have a lot of expenses to pay. But is there a way for me to squeeze out and say, you know what, I want to start building up an emergency fund so that I have access to it if something like this were to happen again? Um, you know, and then the last thing that we would say is that certainly a lot of retirement plan providers, so if you think about the companies that are managing your 401k plan or your IRA or your 4 through B or whatever you might have, a lot of these companies do have advisors available for you to call and chat with. And, and sometimes it's online as well. But if you're looking for help and guidance or someone to talk to, I definitely would recommend that you reach out to that company that works on your 401k plan and, and seek out their guidance and assistance. Talk about your situation, you know, where you are in your career, in your saving cycle, you know, what you experienced during this downturn, downturn in the market and the recovery, you know, and hopefully they can give you some recommendations and guidance on and what's the best type of strategy for you to be investing going forward. Okay, the, the last thing that I would mention briefly is that, you know, I, I brought up the CARES Act that, that was signed into law back in March of this year. And, you know, this is the law that created the, the, the payroll protection program. Um, we had the stimulus payments come out to people, but there was action that was introduced and approved to give some relief from retirement plan accounts. So you had to be what was called a qualified individual. Um, so you, you had to be affected by the virus in one fashion or another, or your spouse had to. Um, and, and we can go into this in more details if people had questions. But the key thing is that there was a, a new type of distribution that was created that your 401k plan may or may not have, have offered. But it's kind of a situation where if you were affected by the virus because maybe you lost your job or furloughed or laid off, you, you contracted the virus, then you'd be able to take money out of your 401k plan and as a special kind of distribution. Um, you, could buy, you could take up to $100,000 through the end of this year. You don't have to pay the 10% penalty that normally comes into consideration if you're under 59 and a half. You can spread the tax liability out over three years, and you would have the ability to put that money back into your retirement account or an IRA within a three-year time period. The act also enhanced some loan features that may be available in the 401k plans as well, where you had the potential to borrow a little bit more. You had the opportunity to potentially delay loan payments for up to a year as well to give you some additional relief.
Now, a lot of this is only in play for 2020 in terms of your distribution. And some of these loan features basically expired at the end of September. So we'll see if Congress takes any additional action to either extend some of these features or enhance them when and if they release some new stimulus packages in the coming months. The other key thing the, the CARES Act did was that it, it waived any type of required minimum distribution for the 2020 calendar year. So if you're retired or of age where you're forced to take money out of your retirement account in the form of a required distribution each year, you're not required to do that in 2020. And if you had already taken that money out prior to the pandemic, so maybe you took this money out in January, you are able to put that back into the account. So the rules are a little bit different for every, you know, each and different 401k plan, IRA, 403b program, and a lot of these features are optional. So again, what we'd recommend is that you reach out to the provider that is managing your retirement account to see if any of these features are available to you to take advantage of, um, and they would be able to guide you through that process. So that kind of you know, wraps up you know, some of our comments in terms of trying to navigate and, and think about what you should be doing with your retirement account during this time period. You know, I think again, we're, we're, we're fortunate that, that the market did recover so quickly, and then many of us are put back to where we were at the beginning of the year. The challenge we, we have in front of us is that the pandemic certainly is not over, especially as we're going into the winter months and there's a the discussion about how the virus coupled with the flu virus, you know, may, may certainly continue. And especially until we have a situation where maybe there's a vaccine that's offered later in the year into next year, who knows for sure what that's going to look like. But this is a great time for you to kind of reevaluate what your investment strategy looks like in your retirement accounts. And, you know, now that the market has recovered and, you know, certainly it's, it's still very volatile as we're approaching the election and so forth. But again, it's a great time to reevaluate. Are you investing appropriately based on, you know, your risk tolerance today, what your time horizon looks like, and just having that comfort level so you can sleep at night, knowing that you feel good about where your money is positioned towards retirement. So again, certainly, you know, take advantage of the resources that you have through your current providers. You know, don't be hesitant to call and talk to someone. People are more than happy to chat about the, your investments and really help you get you through this situation. So with that, that kind of wraps up the comments that I had. Um, if there are questions, certainly we, we can answer them. So I'm not sure if Candice, you want to jump back in and kind of see if there's any questions or open it up for anything at this point. Yeah, I think if anyone has any questions, you know, feel free to unmute and go ahead and ask or you can submit it in the chat. Got a couple thank you notes in here. No questions so far. This was some good information and I think everyone needs a little guidance right now, so. <laughs> So if there aren't any questions, I think we'll go ahead and wrap up. We'll share the recording with everyone today, and then we can also include the full presentation for you as well. So you have that information to reference. And if you have any questions, I'm sure Chris would be more than happy to take, take those for you, or you can um, reach out to the chamber and we can help get you connected either way. All right, I guess on that note, we will say goodbye to everyone. Thank you all for joining us and we hope to see you next time. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Chris.